We're the Bryants. Welcome to our channel. I'm Carissa. This is Caleb, Carly, and Cheyenne. We're on our first multi-state road trip with our camper, Bonnie, which was just sideswiped in Monument Valley, Utah. And although she seems roadworthy, the water is no longer working. We're not about to cut the trip short. We still have the Grand Canyon and a college graduation to attend. <laughs> from Grand Canyon National Park. We pulled in last night, we set up in the dark. We made it though to a ranger presentation for Carly's Junior Ranger booklet. It was really interesting about the animals who live here and uh, what people imagine are the most dangerous animal and what's actually the most dangerous animal. Uh, the most dangerous animal is actually the rock squirrel. <laughs> they get more injuries between people and rock squirrels, any other animal. Pearl has been well aware that she is no longer in Kansas. Um, she, <laughs> last night at the ranger thing, in the dark, she just sat there staring off into the woods, so alert. So, sh like, I don't know if she's curious or concerned or stressed, but she knows this is not her backyard. She sees the deer. And oh our little spider. So much bigger than See? Yesterday. Yes, she yeah. made a bigger web. <laughs> oh, she's getting ready to catch some stuff then. Oh, and may you enjoy it. So here's the shuttle route. We are here at Mather Campground. And uh, we're trying to get over to the visitor center because right over here is the bicycle rental shop. Oh, here comes the bus, guys. You're a what? Oh my goodness, I see your scorpion sting. Mommy, you want to see it with scorpion tail? <laughs> so, we're going to update. Change of plans happened. We have rain forecast for today. And so we thought we would just try to, you know, hustle and be done by noon and, and turn our bikes back in early. Um, but they were so sweet. They saw that we had reserved... And, and paid for a full day of bikes. They have a five hour option. Um, they didn't offer to give us that, but they did offer to let us switch our reservation and uh, save it for tomorrow. It's supposed to be sunny and beautiful tomorrow. So we're gonna, we took them up on that. We were so excited. So we're gonna go on a hike instead. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, it's supposed to be shorter. We were hoping to beat the rain. So we're gonna try to do Ua Point. Like, ooh, ah, point. It's off the South Kaibab Trailhead. And it's less than two miles round trip, but it is steep because you are going down into the canyon a little ways, then back out. So we're thinking with Carly and then baby, it should be a two hour thing. You can do it much faster, but we don't know if we can with our family can. We came all the way back to our campsite, got the backpack, now we're going all the way back to the shuttle stop again. We're gonna go further east. <laughs> I hope it doesn't rain on us. If it starts to rain, the plan is just to not get off the shuttle and ride it back to the visitor center and go to some gift shops and uh, just enjoy what we can. So we're still happy to be here. This is still really good. We saw Havelinas on the shuttle ride back. 
and um, which our ranger said last night was actually really rare. So that or she needs to ride more shuttle buses, I don't know, because we saw a family with little babies. I hear the shuttle, and uh, there's our stop. So, uh, oh, ooh. What? Oh, well, I was thinking we had to hustle, but they have to stop anyway for people getting off. So we don't have any footage from the rest of Uwa Point because we never made it to Uwa Point because this is the part of the day where we started learning lessons. Lesson number one, bring the right shoes. I made a big goof. I had brought my nice trusty Merrells, good walking shoes, but I left them in Bonnie and I slipped and obviously I'm not dead. I did not slip over the edge, but I slipped enough to fall, hit my knee. He was wearing Cheyenne in her backpack. Wearing Cheyenne, holding Carly's hand, and it scared Carly. So she just cried. She sobbed. We've never seen Carly scared before. Not like this. Ever. She was completely <laughs> paralyzed, just locked up and frozen on these switchbacks going down, you know, the canyon wall. And, and so, I mean, even if we had the right footwear to continue going, we kind of felt it it just wouldn't have even been kind to Carly sure. at this point. It was a tough choice to turn back still because we really wanted to keep going. And I felt very silly for wearing the wrong shoes, but it goes back to this lesson, bring the right shoes. We are wrapping up the coffee break. The bicycle rental place is also a coffee shop. So we sat here to enjoy our view. Did you document what happened at Uau? Of the rim? No, I haven't. I haven't talked about Uau Point since Uau Point. So here we are we're at the top. We're safe. We're okay, but I still want to hike down to Uau, but we won't be able to this trip, which means we need to come back next time. But we're safe and we're okay, and that's what's important. And that's good, and sitting here and watching the coffee is good. I think it's like... The coffee, the coffee helps. The hiker part in me, it felt like just going a mile in, that was settling. But it's like, we thought that would be so simple, and we thought, yeah. It's like, no. Like Carly was like sobbing. And I rolled all the way to the cliff, and I rolled down. <laughs> and you rolled off the cliff all the way down to the canyon? Laura, she splashed into the Colorado River and was washed away. They fished her out near Phantom Ranch and sent her back to us on a mule. That's not for No, that part's not for real. We're drinking coffee to celebrate. We can have the chipmunk! All right, I know what the camper said. No! But we gotta help that chipmunk out. It's in our hood! I hope they're all okay. Let me look. I'm Wait, is there babies? It better not have had babies. Oh, it started to rain. A chipmunk just popped out of our hood. Okay, chew up our, like, fuel lines. Okay, oh. I think I have to show the chipmunk is. Oh, yeah, well, well we show oh, the chipmunk. There it is. You. Guys, guys, don't move, don't move. There it is. It's still right there? Yeah, no, don't move. This... Oh, that makes scary. Daddy. That is, I love, I love you with lots of hearts. A chipmunk just popped out of our hood. I love you. 
Out of the engine, Caleb. What are we going to do with this tow truck? Everyone. It's down here. It? It's underneath. It's, like, it's inside of there? It's inside our cowling. No. It's normally, FYI, and I might give away what I do for a living. This is a good place to hide drugs. And this now- This is not what he does for a living. <laughs> now it's a good place to hide chipmunks. Another. <laughs> We kidnapped it on accident. It's not a good place for guns, just FYI. If you're Is it gonna to get like be in an air vent? It can't like pop out in there with the girls, can it? I think Squeaky is either still in the windshield cowling, like in the little like wiper reservoir, or, or got out. Yeah, escaped as we were All the look. way from Grand Canyon over here, which is about a 15 minute drive. So anyway, we're gonna keep checking back on Squeaky, and Carly named Squeaky, by the way. Lesson number two, pack your food or pack extra money. Yeah. The Grand Canyon truly is expensive. Um, food, gas, groceries within the park and outside the park yes. do cost more. Like a kid's meal at McDonald's, like $7.50. And I have a toy. And we'll get there in a second to the toy. We go to get gas. And so far the trip has he been like- He hasn't told me, how much was that? $3 consistently, like a gallon for gas. We get here, like, or 40, which I realize people in the other parts of the US are just used to paying that. So normally it takes us like 50 bucks to fill up a tank. This time to fill up half a tank was 50 bucks. It does pay to pack your fridge or your cooler before you go. The grocery store does have a lot of necessities and treats. And if you wanna pay for them, you can. It's great that they're there, but the sticker shock it's a thing. Okay, Cheyenne. This is super, I mean, this is important and it's very good that they have it and that there's so much here available and accessible in this store, but it is very expensive. So, um, diapers. This is a small package of 31 diapers. $21.99. Wow, like, come prepared for sure. My goodness. We have way more diapers than we needed for her and I'm so glad. So glad because that's that's a lot. Yeah. Hopefully you're not in this situation like ever. Lesson number three: to do your research and have a backup plan. Not for the Grand Canyon, but for rainy days, grumpy kids, grumpy husbands. <laughs> I love planning trips. I, I think I can be guilty of kind of over planning a trip to where we're locked in and we've got to be here, here, and here at this time and we can't be late. And and so actually this trip, I tried to kind of back off and just be like, we need one highlight per day. And the rest of it, we can leave flexible and open. And then we had rain. And when we had planned to do, do everything outside for free, pretty much, except the bikes. But again, outside. After leaving the park and having spent some time there, we can now recommend some things to do on a rainy day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we totally should. It sounds stupid to admit it, but I think we were tired, okay? We had been in our car accident the day before. We had had our plans fall through so many times. We were done by the end of it. But we should have gone back to the visitor center, hopped on a shuttle, yes. and taken the shuttle all along the rim and back and just enjoyed the ride. Yes, we should have done that. We also should have gone to the Yavapai Geology Museum. Yes. We knew there was somewhere where you could see the Grand Canyon indoors. We mm -hmm. didn't know its name or where it was. Yavapai Geology Museum. Yes. It's very near the visitor center. It's just one shuttle stop away. Maybe yeah. two because there's a point in between. It's the yeah. next building over. You can go inside, there's a museum, huge glass windows overlooking the canyon, a gift shop. It really would have probably helped us burn an hour of time yeah. in the rain. So I think I'll throw this on there is, I know Chris was kind of burning herself a second ago for over planning. I don't know if you can over research something though. No. 
I think with yeah. all the traveling we've done and everything we're looking at, and especially this day on the trip, you can't over research. I like that. Um, you can over plan, over book yourself. You can yes. stress yourself out. Yes, you can but do you that. You can't over research so no. you know your options. You can always research and keep researching and finding a plan A and a plan B and a plan C. Yeah. And then you can be fluid as everything keeps changing and you don't. A hiccup isn't a bad hiccup. You can just keep rolling with it. So at the end of this day, the way we handled our rainy day with cold weather, we went back to the camper. We worked on a Junior Ranger book. That was good. And we decided to call it an early night, actually. <laughs> and that was a good choice. We all needed the extra rest. It helped our attitudes a lot. Yeah. And it gave us the energy we needed for our next day, which was really big. Which is biking. We rode the rim. The whole rim. I mean... The South Rim. <laughs> How big would that be? We rode the rim, the entire South Rim, and 28 miles round trip. That was hard. That was great. But it was good. It was brutal. It was brutal. <laughs> but more on that later. More on that later. I even wore my shirt just for this. I got my <laughs> Bright Angel t shirt. Yes, look at you. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. We hope this helps you if you're planning out your trip to the Grand Canyon or honestly, if you just encounter bad weather on any vacation, just show yourself some grace, get some rest, have a backup plan if you can, and enjoy the journey.